live in a, we live in a world devoid of guided Vex EDR builds, especially intake slash shooter ones. Robot trainers at home are looking for a new adventure, so let us present to you this. So tonight, you're going to build a robot capable of playing the sport of choice in the wizarding community. You're gonna bring it to life with code and you are going to compete in the robot Quidditch battle. Not without becoming familiar with the future of robotics design, CAD. Yeah. The present yeah. of robotics design. <laughs> are you ready to, to go on this adventure? Yes. All right, so if you're not in Nerdy Girls and you wanna follow along with this build, there are some structural and electrical pieces that you will need that are not included in the dual controller programming control starter kits. All those parts we have listed in the description box below. You're welcome. Just another reminder that we refer to the left and right sides of the robot in this build as they are from the robot's perspective, not when looking at the robot. So keep that in mind. This is the left side and this is the right side. So you're gonna start with the Clawbot drivetrain. If you already have a Clawbot built at this point, take it on down to the drivetrain. And if not, you're gonna build it up to the drivetrain. You are going to grab your 332 Allen wrench and remove those battery straps. We'll be putting them back on in a different place later on. So next you're gonna flip your cortex around and screw it in eight holes from the left and nine holes from the right in the inner rows of holes. You can make sure the left drivetrain motor is still plugged into port one and the right drivetrain motor is still plugged into port 10. For this step, you're gonna need two 16 hole rails, two 25 hole rails, eight half inch 832 screws and eight nylock nuts. Five holes in from either side of the angle piece, you're gonna attach the two 16 hole rails. You're gonna use the bottom two separate holes and get it really, really tight. And thanks to the nylock nuts, these base pieces are not gonna go anywhere, even if they're a pain to attach. Then five holes in on either side of the front angle piece, you're going to attach your 25 hole rails. All right, step three. You're gonna need two 35 hole angle pieces, four one inch standoffs, and eight half inch 832 screws. You're gonna start by screwing in one side of a standoff 14 holes up on the bottom row of holes on each angle piece. And then you're gonna screw in another standoff nine holes from the top in the top row of holes. And P.S. you can count by fives. Tuck that one away. Next, you're gonna screw in the other side of the bottom standoff five holes up on the inside column of the 16 hole rails. And then you're gonna screw the top standoff 10 holes up in the center column of the 25 hole rails. Step four, you're gonna need two 16 hole rails, two 393 motors, two bearing flats, two three inch shafts, six shaft colors, four intake rollers, and four half inch 632 motor screws. You are gonna place your bearing flats on the first three outside holes on the underbellies of your rails. Using the motor screws, you're gonna screw the motor into the bottom two holes of the bearing flat. Then slide the shafts in with a shaft collar and tighten up against the rail. Then you're gonna slide on another shaft collar on both and tighten so that the top of the collar lines up with the rail lip. Then slide on two intake rollers on each side and finish up with a shaft collar. They should look just like this. All right, set them aside for now. You're gonna need two 35 hole C channels, four one inch standoffs, and eight half inch 832 screws. You're gonna screw in one side of a standoff 16 holes up in the middle of each C channel. Then another six holes down from the top in the outside column of holes. All right, you're gonna screw the bottom standoff five holes down from the top in the outside hole column of the 16 hole rails and the top standoff nine holes down in the center of the 25 hole rails. Step six, you're gonna need six half inch 832 screws, six caps nuts, and two intake pieces that we just assembled. You're gonna screw in the outside hole columns of the intake pieces onto each C channel piece that we just attached. Five holes in, then up another five, and then another at the end. You're gonna tighten those screws and make sure that the lips of the rails are facing out. Step seven, you're gonna need two 16 hole rails, four eighth inch nylon spacers, four half inch 832 screws, four nylock nuts, a 393 motor, two 632 motor screws, two bearing flats, and two pop rivets. 
You're gonna screw the motor into the bearing flat seven holes down on the inside column with the screws going into the eighth and ninth holes. On the other rail, you're gonna create the exact mirror image except you're just gonna secure the pop rivets. And there's no motor. All right, so you're gonna attach the motor rail to the left 25 hole rail, putting the screws through a spacer and then through the 25 hole rail, starting two small holes from the top. Boom, and you're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side with the other rail. Step eight, you will need a seven inch long shaft, a four and a half inch long shaft, four bearing flats, eight pop rivets, 12 shaft collars, 19 gray base links, 19 tall inserts, a 75 unit long length of tank tread, and two tank tread wheels. So you're gonna grab your tank tread and the base links and proceed to very carefully insert the base links into the tread so that it follows this pattern. One gray, four green, one gray, four green, one gray, four green, one four green until you've used up all 19 base links and you are left with just three green off the end. So sad. Then you're gonna slide the tall fins into each base link and set this aside. You're gonna take two bearing flats and four pop rivets and secure the bearing flats to the first three middle holes of the long C channel on the outside, securing with pop rivets in the first two holes. Now you're gonna grab your seven inch long shaft and begin to slide through the top hole of the right bearing flat. Here's the order to slide things on. A shaft collar, then through the bearing flat on the C channel, two shaft collars, a tank tread wheel, two shaft collars and through the other C channel bearing flat through a shaft collar through the final bearing flat into the motor. You may need to loosen some of the structural pieces and adjust them so that the shaft can easily slide through all the holes. And you're gonna tighten the shaft collars against the appropriate edges making sure that the wheel is completely centered. And then make sure that the gap is the same width all the way up. You don't wanna get narrower at the top. Now you're gonna link the ends of the tank tread around that drive wheel and let it sit for a second. Now grab the last two bearing flats and place them on the last three holes in the middle column of the C channel. And you're gonna secure the center and back holes with pop rivets. Grab your four and a half inch shaft. Then you're gonna slide on two shaft collars, the tank tread wheel, but only after you loop the tank tread around it, two shaft collars, and then through the other bearing flat. And then once you have everything centered, you're gonna slide a shaft collar on either end, tighten them all down against the edges. You should now be the proud owner of a partially built quaffler. Step nine, you are going to need a bumper switch and four small zip ties. You're gonna slide the bumper switch down between the angle pieces with the switch part above the bottom. Make sure the cord side is facing the cortex. Slowly and carefully, you're gonna zip tie each side through the sixth and seventh holes of the angle pieces, starting super loose and then slowly tightening each in turn to make sure that the bumper switch stays centered and no sneaky sides pop up. Then you're gonna plug it into digital port five, remembering that the black wire goes on the outside. Step 10, you will need two five by 15 plates, eight one inch standoffs, and eight half inch 832 screws. It's time to lay the groundwork for the fly wheel shooter mechanism. You're gonna grab your two plates and screw the standoffs into the four corners. Step 11, you are going to need four bearing flats, four 12 tooth gears, two 36 tooth gears, two 60 tooth gears, eight shaft collars, two pop rivets, two rubber shaft collars, two eighth inch nylon spacers, four half inch 632 motor screws, two 393 motors, four three inch shafts, and two five inch shafts. You're gonna place a bearing flat two holes down from the top outside stand up and secure with a pop rivet right in the middle. And then you're gonna place the next two bearing flats three holes down from that and then screw your motor into the bottom two holes. I cannot stress this enough. You really, really wanna tighten down that motor because it will come loose and you're gonna regret it because you're gonna have to take this whole thing apart to get those little screws. So save the regret, tighten the screw. TM. What we are about to create is a compound gear ratio that will enable our shooter wheels to spin super freaking fast. We're gonna build it out and then I'm gonna explain more. On each plate, you're gonna slide a three inch shaft through the hole in the lower bearing flat, going through a shaft collar before going into the motor. You're gonna tighten that shaft collar against the plate. Next, you're gonna slide on your 60 tooth gear and then a shaft collar. Slide another three inch shaft through the lower hole of the remaining bearing flat, making sure it's a little lower than the other shaft so that a future pop rivet won't interfere with it. Up top, you're gonna slide on a 12 tooth gear and then a 36 tooth gear. And moving on to the final bearing flat hole, you are going to slide in the five inch shaft just far enough to secure a shaft collar on the other side. And then you're gonna slide on a rubber shaft collar, a 1 8 inch nylon spacer, and then the final 12 tooth gear. 
Now what you've just assembled is a compound gear train, which is essentially combining two or more simple gear trains together so that you have more flexibility to really gear up or gear down. In this case, we have a 12 to 60 or one to five ratio compounded by a 12 to 36 or one to three ratio. And then the way you find the compound ratio is to multiply the driven gears together, one times one, and the driving gears together, three times five, find that we now have a one to 15 gear ratio, which will let us go really fast. If you need a refresh on gear ratios, I will link some resources in the description for you. This is way faster than any single gear ratio you can build with VEX gear because the most you can get is a 12 tooth gear to an 84 tooth gear, which is one to seven. That's less than half of the compound gearbox we just created. Step 12, what you're gonna need is two five by 15 plates, 14 half inch 832 screws, six rubber shaft collars, and six three quarter inch standoffs. You're gonna screw your three quarter inch standoffs here, here, and here. Two holes out and down seven holes. Two holes out, three up from the bottom, and then three holes out and three up from the bottom as well. Then you're gonna set the plates on top of the gear sandwich that you just made. Then you're gonna screw in the corners and slide those rubber shaft collars onto each of the shafts. Step 13, you will need two 15 hole long C-channels, four quarter inch 832 screws, four caps nuts, two bearing flats, and four pop rivets. All right, so you're gonna mount each C-channel length against the angle pieces with three holes of the C-channel sticking out with quarter inch screws and caps nuts. We screwed them in at the first and seventh bottom holes on the angle pieces or about there. And then in the outside first three holes on each side, you're gonna secure a bearing flat with pop rivets in the back two holes. Step 14, you will need six quarter inch 832 screws. You're gonna take the left sandwich and slide the long shaft through the outer corner hole of the C-channel that we just attached. And then on the angle piece, the standoffs that you've mounted should match up two holes down on the inside column of the angle piece and the other two eight holes down. You're gonna do the same thing for the other piece, making sure that it is the mirror image. And you can expect a small amount of overlap between those two gear sandwiches. Step 15, you will need four half inch 832 screws, two caps nuts, two one inch standoffs, four washers, and a five by five plate. You're gonna screw in that plate three holes down the center column of the angle pieces, making sure to slide the screws through two washers each before you slide it through the angle pieces. Then secure those with those caps nuts. In the front two corners, you're gonna use the remaining screws to screw in the two standoffs that will just sort of act as a stabilizer and so they don't need to be secured on the bottom. Step 16, you will need two eighth inch nylon spacers, four two and three quarter inch wheels, and two shaft collars. It's time to mount the wheels for the flywheel shooter. So you're gonna slide a spacer onto each axle followed by two wheels on each side, which may need the shaft inserts popped into place. And finally, you're gonna slide on the shaft collars and tighten down. Check out how the ramp lifts the quaffle as it approaches the shooter wheels so that the wheels are gonna grip the widest part of the quaffle. Step 17, you are gonna need two battery straps, four half inch 832 screws, and a four caps nuts. So on the right back 16 hole rail, you're gonna screw in one of those battery straps to the bottom of the big slot and then two holes down. Then you're gonna screw in the other battery strap five holes down from that. You can now slide in your bat. Optional step 18, you will need four small zip ties and two large bolts. You may come to the point where you want to zip tie some large bolts near the back of your quaffler that will act as a counterbalance to the front end. We secured those with zip ties, seven and 12 holes up, FYI. Step 19, you are going to need five motor controllers. So again, make sure that your left drivetrain motor is plugged into port one and your right one's plugged into port 10. You're gonna plug the remaining five motors into motor controllers, and then here are the ports that we plug them into. The motor driving the belt is gonna go into port two, port three for the left intake, and port four for the right, then port five for the left shooter, and port six for the right shooter. And make sure black faces the outside and get your wiring improved by the official electrical inspector before heading on to coding. Oh. Before we move on to code, it's time for you, yes you, to learn how to wield the forces of CAD with this build. Wield them. Click the link in the description to redirect yourself to this robot's CAD tutorial. Oh yeah. If you are using a new controller or you swap in with a buddy, whatever, you're gonna need to pair that controller with the Cortex. So click the link in the description, it'll take you right to the pairing tutorial and come right back here when you got that all squared away. All right, so tonight we are going to program the robot to be drivable with the controller. We're going to create a macro, more on that in a second, that with the help of the bumper switch will take care of the shooting for us. Okay, so I'm gonna open up Robot C and create a new code file. Make sure that you have VEXnet or USB checked because we're gonna be using that controller. Make sure that the platform is VEX 2.0 Cortex. All right, time to set that hardware up. Drivetrain motors plugged into ports one and 10, left is reverse. 
Our belt motor is plugged into port two. Our left intake, port three, right intake, port four. And we're just gonna reverse the left intake so that we can give positive power to both and they'll spin in opposite directions to pull the quaffle in. All right, left shooter motor is plugged into port five. The right into port six. We're gonna reverse the right one here so that we can just give both motors a positive number and it'll make the shooter wheel spin the opposite directions to shoot that quaffle out. Finally, we're gonna go over to digital sensors and we have our bumper switch plugged into port five. So we're gonna hit apply, okay, and then let's save it. First things first, you know the drill. We're gonna set up a while loop that constantly checks to see if buttons are pressed. Next, inside your while loop, you're gonna set up either tank drive or arcade drive. Remember, tank drive code is just gonna be direct input from both vertical axes, and the arcade drive uses values from both the vertical and the horizontal for one joystick. If you want a more in-depth explanation or you need a review of the tank versus arcade, I have linked the relevant part of the Clawbot tutorial below for you. For this, I'm gonna do arcade drive. Whip. Now we're gonna create a bunch of if else statements for each mechanism. So first I'm gonna pick what buttons I wanna control everything. So I'm gonna do seven right for intake wheels and upper left trigger for the belt. So I'll do seven if button, seven right is pressed. We're gonna activate those intake wheels. Otherwise, don't spin those intake wheels. If the left trigger, aka button five up is pressed, you're gonna move that belt, otherwise you're not gonna move that belt. <laughs> then we're gonna hold off on the shooter wheels for a second because we're gonna put those commands in a macro. Actually not that different from the functions you set up for the cow tip battle. Generally, broadly speaking, a macro is a single instruction that gets expanded into a set of instructions. In our case, in the application of robotics, a macro is a mini routine that runs at the touch of a single button gonna simplify the driving process big time. So if you're familiar with the competitive robotics leagues terms like autonomous mode, where the robot uses pre-written routines and teleop mode where you drive the robot, then you can think of it as a mini autonomous inside the teleop. So we're gonna create our own macro today that's gonna activate the shooter wheels and push the ball into them. We're gonna store this macro inside a function called something like shoot ball. I'm gonna set it up, use our for declaration. And all the way down outside that main function is where we're gonna set up the meat of the macro. The plan for this is that when the ball hits the bumper switch, the belt is gonna stop and the code will check for the secret macro button to be pressed. If that button is pressed, the macro will activate, which will look like this. Start up the shooter wheels. We'll give them a second to get to full speed. Then we'll get the belt moving to feed the ball into the shooter. I'm setting it at a slower speed, so it should take a little over a second to get the ball into the shooter wheels. Then we're gonna shut everything down. And that is going to be our macro. We want the macro to be able to activate only when the bumper switch is pressed. So we'll start by creating an if statement for that backup in the main function. So we'll say that if the sensor value for the bumper switch is equal to one, aka if it's pressed, if it's not pressed, it's equal to zero. Then we want to stop the belt motor, tiny pause to let it come to a complete stop. And then after that, we'll check if the button for the macro is pressed. So you can pick your button. I'm gonna pick eight left. So if that button's pressed, then we will activate the macro, aka call up the function. And then that way, the bumper switch has to be pressed first in order for macro activation to be an option, which will save you from being annoyed when you constantly keep accidentally pressing the macro button. All right. We are going to save this. We're gonna test it. And then you're gonna adjust the speeds because it is your robot. Spread your little wings, but not for too long because there's a match coming up. Gather round, Gryffindors, Slytherins, Hufflepuffs, and Ravenclaws. And everyone in between. I'm a Hufflepuff, what are you? I'm a Slytherin, but I'm not a Death Eater. Welcome, Welcome to the most magical robot battle of the century. Robot Quidditch. Shit, shit, shit. Here are the oh. rules. Robots have three minutes to score as many quaffles through the goals as possible. Any quaffle in the high goal earns you 10 points. Any quaffle in the low goal earns you five points. A red quaffle in the high goal earns an additional five points. A red quaffle in the low goal earns an additional two points. You must reach 100 points to beat this battle. Best of luck to you and your quaffler. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Tengo a los gringos arriba chequeándome